officially begin, and they can edit off anything before this when we fumbled with, I thought we were fumbling with technology. Okay. Um, call to order. Call to order. So we have a quorum. Four out of six members are here. We have hybrid participation available. Um, first thing on the agenda, call to order, opening reflections. Anyone wants to share anything positive, hopeful, uh, recent? You know, it was just an idea that I brought up last mm -hmm. time that maybe we could end and start with something positive mm -hmm. and inclusive, if possible. Like community level, or personal, I or? Think, I think it's wide open. Mm -hmm. I do too. Well, speaking of being at the costume shop again, I love being part of the UMass Theater Department because mm -hmm. it is very diverse and inclusive. And okay. one of our former grad students is there right now doing the costumes for a show that's going up this weekend called, I think it's called Many Colors, One Claw. I forget that poem. It's sold out. It's in the curtain. There's no way I could get to see it anyway, but I wish I could because the stuff she has hanging up in the costume shop is beautiful. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, next on the agenda, clerk's report, review of the minutes. Uh, it's been two weeks since I reviewed them, so I don't remember, but I don't think I had any problem with anybody else. I didn't either. I just looked them over real quick. Thought I said I looked at it a long time ago, and I didn't see an issue. Yeah. Anyone watching this afterwards, I apologize. We tried to have this meeting two weeks ago and then and a week ago, and then we're finally pulling it off today. So we're, okay. we're a little bit out of sync. So that well, I'm, yeah. I move that we set the minutes. Yeah, yeah that's yes. the right word. <laughs> yes. As presented. As presented. Uh, I would second that. Mm -hmm. All in favor? All right. Opposed? Abstain? We have four to zero. I don't know why I asked for the other ones just to be just to follow. Mm -hmm. oh. That's annual report update submitted to Jennifer. Mm -hmm. um, so she said that she she submitted it on February twenty first. So that's in the annual report. So we should be in the when that comes out at the annual town meeting, mm -hmm. should be our, I think it's our first report. Yeah, I think so. And she'll contact who you was, they, we need to end, like shorten it. I know how we had directions. So yes, yes. We need to shorten it, they would get out yeah, to us. They would reach out to Pat and the one And so we get to pick. Right, so you know, okay. cut the. The wrong parts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, with, if no other questions or concerns on that, mm -hmm. I'd move on to the ZBA letter sent to Andrew Bombardier, uh, chair for the of the ZBA. That was sent on mm -hmm. February 23rd. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, if in case anyone hasn't followed that, there was a second meeting. Uh, a month later, mm -hmm. I think that was. I think it's been under. Or it's, it's that was earlier this month. Yeah. And oh. um, uh, I got there a little bit late because I tried to zoom, but the audio was awful. Mm -hmm. So I just I only lived five minutes away, so I hopped in the car and and drove over to the library. And uh, Laura Baker of. Valley CBC was in the midst of presenting her PowerPoint to, uh, well, I would say there was an audience of maybe 25 to 40 people in the room. I mean, the room was yeah. was pretty full. Huh. Um, and there were three members of the ZBA. One of them I found out afterwards, uh, Linda LaDuke had recused herself or I don't know if she was asked to or whatever. Um, and I wondered, I asked why, and the explanation I got was that she had expressed support for this, and I think it was, 
I guess, considered premature to ex to openly express support before a vote. I I I'm not a yeah. I don't know how that works. So anyway, so she wasn't there, and there were three gentlemen. Um, I, I don't know all of their names. Um, I know that uh, Andrew. Bumbier is the chairman. So he was in the center and there were two other gentlemen. And uh, Laura was at the end of the table presenting the slide, the slides of the, of the PowerPoint. Um, Alex was in the back working the, the laptop. And at the end of her presentation, uh, I think there were, I think, Someone spoke. I believe it was, it may have just been the attorney for the applicant um, who spoke to clarify something. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I figured it was not open to the, the public comment yet. Yeah, they had, they had what I found out afterwards is that they said there would not be public right. comment because they had already had an opportunity at the first meeting. Which I hadn't been able to come to because I was in a conflicting sure. meeting. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, I missed that first opening part. So I was waiting for them to, uh, Robert, to the orders. You make a motion, you make a second, and then you discuss it, mm -hmm. and then you vote. Yeah. Well, they made the. Yeah. Actually, I think the three of them each individually spoke their opinions, and they all seemed aligned against it. Um, but then they made the motion, they made the second, and they voted. So at that point, I was stunned because I hadn't been there at the very beginning when they said they would not entertain. And I thought, wow, okay. And basically, what I took away from it was they said that, um, I heard it several times, that they were an, an appointed board and that the town zoning um, did not allow for apartment buildings and had not in its 60 year life of town zoning. And so their position was, who are we three appointed to overturn that? Uh, and I was thinking in the back of my head, but you had letters of support from the select board from you know a number of you know but mm -hmm. obviously yeah. they were not in support so they so that was it it was rejected so as I understand uh, they have they have the right to appeal I don't know where that goes or how that works so I guess it's either dead or we'll see what happens with an appeal so. Um, I got the impression from the write-up in the paper that it might go to more of like a town meeting or like a more people that they needed. I think I heard some parking lot discussion of people that were supporters and mm -hmm. can we do this or can we do that? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think I just heard ideas being bounced around, um, mm -hmm. things like, um, I mean, how to take, I don't know that you can take it to a town vote. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I know someone said, "Can we change the zoning?" And, and that, that would that would be a hail mary to do it this quickly before the town meeting mm -hmm. and to get everyone on board. And, um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure that would be the best way to go because we had the opportunity with them. This is my opinion. Um, we had the opportunity when they presented to the CBA to ask them to put in whatever we wanted. We could stipulate any condition because we didn't have to accept it. And if we had then accepted it, we could, you know, it was basically an exception to the rules and that's how these work. And it would have helped, you know, there was a lot of explanation and discussion of how this would benefit town now to go back and make it legal for them to do that is a whole different can of worms because that would be change the zoning say all right now we want apartments mm -hmm. now you might get 
Be careful what you're asking. Yeah, exactly. So in this case, we could have gotten just that and no more. So it was actually kind of a nice opportunity, but mm -hmm. that seems to have gone um, inside. So I, mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not an attorney or a, you know. So can I ask a question? Because I was on vacation yeah. and I couldn't come to that some of those meetings. So there were people made public comment. There was our letter supporting this. The select board was in support of the development. I think a majority of majority the, of the select board members, and then three members of the DBA rejected it, which is entirely within their mm -hmm. their right and purview. Okay. Okay. Um, I clarify. think it was you know I think in hindsight it was the ball was in our court as. You know, our meaning the community that was pro mm -hmm. conversion of the Econo Lodge to express ourselves to the mm -hmm. DBA beforehand. And I don't know if they got a lot, you know, yeah, I, did. I don't know if they got a lot of yeah. pro and a lot of con. Yeah. I don't they know. They got a lot of pro. Yeah. Uh, so they got con too. Yeah, yeah, they did yeah. this being a paper. I've been following it in the paper. Because there are those email strings from yeah. Andrea's family requested did a records request. She wanted to see all the oh. correspondence that they engaged in and received or sent on this issue. And yeah, they got a lot of it. Yeah, that's mm. because I, I think that's what um I want to say Andrew, I'm not sure, but at least one of them did say, and it probably would have been Andrew as the chair. I believe at some point in that second meeting, he did say that they had a lot of responses on both sides. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. they felt it was yeah. Yeah. not a clear slam dunk. And so they felt, who are we, this, exactly. this, this board? That was their position that I heard. That, that's the impression I got from the write up. Yeah. Again, we never know if the paper is, There's but that they in. felt like. This is not our decision to make, given how controversial it appears. And and I think they said a few times, you know, this should be something that should be, you know, up to the town, not to three appointed members. And so that's why I think afterwards in the parking lot, you heard a lot of people saying, "How can we get to the mm -hmm. to town meeting?" Mm -hmm. oh, because because there was a general hubris of the supporters that they could get it through town meeting, but I, you know, I don't, it's not that easy. I, I don't, think, I, I don't think, I don't know. I'm it was not an attorney. The impression I got from the newspaper article, he said, for me, it made me feel like that somebody else, but I, I did, I seemed to be on some email lists where I was getting all kinds of comments, which I had no time to read. Yeah. Hardly any of them because I just can't yeah. <laughs> keep up with all of that. Yeah. Uh, conversation, yes, but emails, it's yeah. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I, I really can appreciate that that's a difficult decision for these CBA members. And if they're hearing, you know, the community being split around this, that, you know, that's a very difficult decision. So I hear that that was, well, we don't want to go ahead with this because who are we mm -hmm. to make this happen if we're appointed officials? Mm -hmm. And yet they are making the same decision by killing it. Right. <laughs> and, and then right. half of, you know, or whatever Good portion point. of the yeah, community is also saying, wait a second. So, I mean, they could that have let's continue goes, again and hear more about the point. Point. Have more right. that means no, we have no power to make decisions, so we'll say no. Right. But I think, <laughs> I think <laughs> what, what I heard him say was it's been 60 years and no one else in the town mm -hmm. has changed that um, exclusion of apartments. So, who are we? With the town divided to change that after sixty the years, that, that, like that. You know, uh -huh. so I don't know if he was throwing back at the at, at the planning board and he's saying, mm -hmm. you know, this is yeah. You know, so yeah, it was. Mm -hmm. very close I think you know, it's hard. yeah, so very unfortunate. Yeah. Um, I guess 
as the saying goes, it's not over till the fat lady sings. Uh, you know, I guess they can appeal. I don't know what that process yeah, I don't know. entails. Didn't they buy the building? Yeah, they bought well, you have to buy it they to did. ask for the zoning. So oh, do you? I, I think so. Oh. You can't you can't just waltz into a town and say, Hey, what if I did the da 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 da? Well, Would I, you let me do that? Well, I've before seen before I spend my money on your building. I've seen a lot of ability. developers pay the owner for an option. Okay. And the option says, if I get the required oh, approvals, right. uh -huh. then I will purchase your building at this price. But they didn't do that. And I don't know if that was a stipulation to get the support, to get the money from the state. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's They seem to do this. This is their thing. Yeah. I appreciate the letter that Haley from the senior center put in the paper about this. Did you mm -hmm. all read that? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, very much. And so she said in her letter that the the most common consultation they'll have in here with people needing some help is housing. Mm -hmm. oh. Seniors who need housing yeah. they can afford. Yeah. If you yeah. Yeah, look it up, it, it, it was just a, a statement of fact mm -hmm. that there's a need. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that's I like to hear facts, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so mm -hmm. somewhere someone should look at the realities to, of yeah. today and look at our zoning from the perspective of yeah. certain kinds of except you know certain kinds of yeah I don't know if I want to use the word exceptions or just mm -hmm. look at it from the eyes of today yeah. that a lot of baby boomers right. are aging right a lot of us yeah you know just that part mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. and she highlighted that there would be services right on the premises yeah yeah you know that was there's yeah. a lot of letters and no i i i wanted to get so, up and speak and say you know a lot of the opposition i'm hearing or that i've heard is against you know one or two scenarios that have been presented you know that you know wouldn't it be great if people that work the lower income jobs in the mall could live here instead of having to commute from wherever they are mm -hmm. and that triggered i think people saying oh you're going to bring low income yeah. Yeah. but another argument was that if the select board had said we want 70 percent local preference then the first 70% of them would have been offered, would have been reserved for the people that I think the locals care about the most, which mm -hmm. is, you know, their yeah. their parents, their grandparents mm -hmm. who need to downsize but can't afford to buy something smaller in town. So then yeah. where do they go? You know, what are their options? So it was a great option for that, but I didn't hear that being pushed mm -hmm. as, because it, it was, I mean, as for elderly housing, be there in a community near the mall, near the bus. Mm -hmm, I mean, yeah. it was it was like, wow, this is yeah, what a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. But you know, so there was a lot of ways to go. Anyway, I don't know. Should we keep going on about this? And... No, thanks for bringing no. us up to date. Yeah, yeah. appreciate the date on that. Yeah, and I've been sort of following not too closely because of everything else I have going on, but some of the chatter coming out of the Hadley Learns community. Yeah. I watched yeah. on Zoom the mm -hmm. Monday night at not the only remember their names, their house where they had the taco party and then mm, yeah. show mm -hmm. share a little bit of a meme about it. And the one contribution I made was thank you, Wayne, for harping on being specific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said, you know, we need to know specifically what are we asking for? We need to be clear and be specific about if we're going to write a petition or put something mm -hmm. on the town meeting or whatever. If we're going to go to the public for a decision on something, we need to be clear and specific about mm -hmm. what that is. Because right now, it's we're not right now. What we're clear about is we wish that the ZBA had said something different. Mm -hmm. That ship sailed. Yeah. <laughs> I heard that that was that taco dinner was going, and I again had a conflict because yeah. I was at this EPA meeting where we were debating the Russell School. So, oh, right. Well, that's important. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so.
Okay. Well, that is item 3C. Item 4 is old business. Uh, and item A under that is ZBA affordable mm -hmm. uh, housing local preference. That's, I think we kind of covered that. Let's mm -hmm. <laughs> it together. Um, and for B is Hadley housing production plan discussion. Um, so I don't know if any of you have seen that. I did not bring my copy of it. Did you say three eight, meaning that there was something an event? I think it was maybe presented at the, at that date. I'm not sure. I I did see before I came tonight. I was checking if there are any more emails that I needed to see. I did see something attached, but I tend to print things out, and I saw this was massive. I think so well, I it was. That. I think it was thirty something pages. Yeah. Um, we, my other half, the planning board. Um, we approved it unanimously. I believe that, I don't know the vote on the select board, but I know they approved it. I don't know if that was a majority or mm. unanimous. Um, I think I only heard kudos about it. I'll have to read it. Yeah. Didn't, um, didn't Pat bring a copy of it to our last meeting? I think she might have had one that, you know, if she had her copy, mm -hmm. that she might have let us pass around to the home. Mm -hmm. um, no, not done. But then, if anyone yeah. wants it, actually, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, PDF on the town. Oh, I would yeah. think it's got to be on the town, yeah. on the town website. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhat, there's an email with it attached. Oh, yeah. That, that's where I got this and this, and that was the third attachment. And it's really, um, it's you know, it, it reflects a lot of research and work done by the mm -hmm. Iron Valley Planning Commission where they uh, went out and harvested a lot of data mm -hmm. um, you know just went to a lot of different sources and brought these numbers together and made mm -hmm. them make sense nice um, to you know to paint a picture about what our current situation is with housing what our needs are mm -hmm. um, the results of the survey and how many people um, wanted or couldn't afford or whatever. Um, so it went into all that and it uh, quantified uh, income levels and need and things. And it, was, it was a very informative document. And I think it is also something that the town needed to get done to check a box to um, I think it's one of those um, links in the chain that you need to um, to protect your community from a uh, what they call an unfriendly forty bid. You, know, mm -hmm. you know, to have that and to be working towards it, uh, towards whatever the goals are in it. I think they say, you know, if you make a half a percent or something like that progress every year to um, even if you're under the 10 percent, that that helps to in your argument. If you want to, if your town wants to uh, fight uh, a project like there's a big project coming up. Uh, I don't know if you've all seen it in the paper, but I know it was, it was brought to the planning board or at least there's. It's coming to us is uh it's like two hundred units. Yeah. That uh near my house. I think it's up near um uh right where Rocky Hill crosses Maple. Exactly. Yeah. At the end of the fields behind it. Yeah. So that's a proposal um being brought. Hmm. I think it um because I know that um our clerk on the planning board, Bill, said, um, explained in our last meeting to the public that uh, he thinks that has a real uphill battle because uh, mm -hmm. you know it's it's scale mm -hmm. will uh, will just floor everyone and it will just mm -hmm. uh, probably inflame a lot of the concerns about infrastructure needs and things like that mm -hmm. um, okay. 
Whereas this Tano Lodge, if it were, let's say it was a high local preference, and that was, you know, we have a, a an aging demographic in town, it would, it, by default, be kind of elderly housing, mm -hmm. which doesn't put any burden on the school system, which mm -hmm. is one of the things that people have to right. And mm -hmm. by the fact that it's an existing building already connected, right. it wouldn't put any extra burden on the sewer system. You know, anyway, I digress. Mm -hmm. Alex, and there is there? no sewer line up on that corner yeah. by um, where Rocky Hill Crossing. Oh, up there. Yeah, that's right. right where what that young guy who did the horse farm built houses that had to be taken down because oh, oh that's he, he built them and then this is my understanding, my recollection is that he built the houses and then went to the town and said, Now you have to hook them up to the sewer. And the town said, No, we don't. Oh, my understanding was that there was uh, the water table was too high. They all flooded. I saw. I, I oh, went. Wow. Look, all the basements were flooded. I don't know what yeah. that's that story. That, I, that's what I understood. Okay. Yeah, I mm -hmm. thought. I thought that I had heard, and I, and that was many years ago. So don't quote me yeah. on that. But I thought I heard that he had, um, had put the foundations in before he had approvals. Yeah. So he got shut down. All of these owners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, do we want to, I'll, I'm going to propose maybe that if we could all take a look at that attachment, mm -hmm. and then if we wanted to circle back and talk about it, mm -hmm. those of us who haven't read it would be able to have a meaningful discussion. Mm -hmm. On the Hadley Housing Protection Plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it sounds like you have. Yes, I've read it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it would be a good one for us to all read and, mm. and be able to. If we, if we have any comments. Yeah. yeah. So that's, can, I'm throwing that on the table. You can yeah. download that to your iPad or your tablet yeah. or oh, whatever. Okay. And if you're having trouble falling asleep at night, you can, just, <laughs> you can get to a few pages and then get to a few more. Well, it's a lot of numbers and it's a lot of. Love well, that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so, Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's boring. I'm just saying if you're already prone to going to sleep. <laughs> Uh, a lot of numbers and statistics okay. can help you sometimes. So you might only get to you through a few pages a night. Okay. Uh, depending on depending on when you know where I am in my feeding cycle of the day, you know mm -hmm. what I retain on first read through and what I have to go back and reread a page uh, depends on <laughs> probably where your electrolytes are or something. I'm not a doctor and I don't play one on TV, so <laughs> just disregard that whole comments. Um, but that's a good idea yeah, if we all okay. want to read that. Um, yeah. And if you um, want me to send it, if you don't find it in your emails, um, you can send it. I am. Um, that would move us along to 5A, new business. Um, ideas for honoring LGBTQ Pride Month, mm -hmm. June 2023. Uh, Co-sponsored movie at the Senior Center, movie matinees. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I actually just this evening reviewing the agenda before coming here while I was eating dinner. The thought that popped into my head is the movie called Pride. It's been out for a while. I think I either got it out of the library on the DVD or maybe maybe I watched it on Canopy. I think I got the DVD because it was before the Canopy. But anyway, it's based on true events. Um, under Thatcher, the Welsh miners' strike, they were supported a lot by the queer community in London. Mm -hmm. And there was some kind of going back and forth, sort of an unlikely allies story and very you know it's a story that never gets old mm -hmm. you know having unlikely allies mm -hmm. and, and being able to see through you know your preconceptions about a group of people yeah, yeah. and find the common ground yeah. and support each other it's really beautiful wonderful movie uh, that sounds good yeah so <laughs> i mean it's not local it's not super recent i don't know if that makes a difference mm. but it was the first thing that popped into my head i would 
love to have other suggestions. I'm sure there are lots of good possibilities. Mm -hmm. I've um, I've uh, recently gotten rid of my uh, when I changed cars. The new car didn't support the Sirius XM, which my last one came with. So I had that music and stations. So I had to find something different. And family's like, oh, well, that's so expensive. Yeah. So they got me onto the family Spotify. So mm -hmm. I found on Spotify, you can teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. Here I am in yeah. my in my 60s and I've discovered podcasts. Yeah. yeah. Better late than never. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the ones that I've you know I realize is available as a podcast that I would love every time I stumbled on it, I was in the car at the right time when NPR would play it, mm -hmm. is Shankar Vedantra. Mm -hmm. Hidden Brain. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard these? He does these, I think, once a week, maybe on the weekend or something. He's great. Um, it's, it's basically science talk. And he, he interviews you know, uh, researchers or whatever. And the one, uh, I listened to one, and, and then you can kind of go in. Um, there was one that was two parts that I listened to this past week. Um, I think it's called um, something like discovering your hidden brain or discovering your subconscious or something like that. But it was basically, um, I don't want to oversimplify it, but it went a lot into the discovery and results of the discovery of implicit bias. Mm -hmm. And so it uh, he, he starts with this woman that it was a girl growing up in in India and what shaped her decisions about what she wanted to study and where she wanted to go and and then how she was studying and she she discovered this concept of implicit bias mm -hmm. and then it talks about how that just blew up how it just went viral and how it doesn't talk about woke, but basically mm -hmm. that the backlash is, mm -hmm. um, you know, that uh, you know, I think um, even our local chief, um, police chief, said that they, they had done some training on implicit bias because, you know, that's one yeah. of the criticisms that a lot of mm -hmm. police departments have been, uh, have had thrown at them with the whole George Floyd and the list goes on and on and on, um, is that even when you think you're not biased, there's an input. And they would do these questionnaires that would suss out and you'd be like, wow, yeah. And um, so it's very interesting. And as they talked through it, they were talking about how um, how uh, she, the re researcher, Said it's you know that I, I believe quote it's a fool's errand to try to train implicit bias out of people. You, it that just doesn't. Mm -hmm. It's not that kind. You can you know she said I will only come and speak to you know if a corporation calls her or something. I will only come to do it if it's voluntary. Mm -hmm. so I you know it's just a waste of time mm -hmm. to make it that. required because some people are not going to yeah. want to hear it or hear it or whatever. And she said, and so who who gains from that? Mm -hmm. Um and so and and so they were talking about how that's and then she talked about how um or they talked about how uh, ingrained certain things become in a culture. Mm -hmm. um, sure. And I, I could go on. I, mm -hmm. I shouldn't take up the whole town but like one of the examples they had was some researcher went back and found this map that Abraham Lincoln had made by his staff in 1860 that he sent them uh, to, to the south to with a, a map of all the counties and they basically surveyed and found out which counties were most heavily um, invested in slave ownership so that he would know, you know we're not going to win them over with his 
uh, emancipation. So he kind of so so this modern day researcher went and found that map and went back and looked at these towns again mm -hmm. and using this implicit bias overlay and found huge correlation. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, and the, the the researchers are like, well, the people that held slaves are long dead and buried. So what are what kind of echoes are these? And it was it was just you know they, they talked about all the if maybe this that and and just how it 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 um, gets into a culture and gets passed along. Mm -hmm. They talked yes. about checking children for implicit bias, and they they fully expected when they did that study they would find there would be no implicit bias until you're like six or eight or older, and they were stunned to find it at like age three. Oh, yeah. You know, like you're barely talking, but you've already soaked it up. Yeah. So it was, it was just very, very interesting. But um, I guess the reason I went to that was because it said, you mentioned pride. Um, they said that these things are very slow to change yeah. a culture on that. Sure. Mm -hmm. But then she said, with some, with some outliers, she, mm -hmm. she said. The rate in which LGBTQ, that typhoon, I mean, you go back 20 years and it was, don't want it, you know, right. parents wouldn't support their kids. Right. And they talked about three different factors. Like, well, it was like in the home, in the government, you know, is it codified and in the workplace? And these are the three places. And and it's 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 it changed that, but at the end of that, they said something, but it's not locked in. It could be rolled back, and that's what yeah, right. you made me think of with what's going on in Florida and yeah. Mississippi, oh, yeah. Tennessee, yeah. where they're codifying now. You know, you've got mm -hmm. these very conservative mm -hmm. um, leaders, you know, whether it's governors or yep. whatever, who yep. believe that this is the devil's work. Right. Uh, and that these children should not be allowed to, uh, I don't know, pursue their fancies that I'm not sure I, I'm the right gender. You know? mm -hmm. um, and you know, so I, anyway, it was. I wonder, given that, given the backlash, I wonder if it might make sense to have a film about trans kiddos and to oh, really yeah. educate people on the experience of trans kids and their families, um, supportive families, um, mm. and just to sort of, for people that, you know, don't have relationships with trans folks to sort of humanize and educate. Um, yeah. I wonder about that. I, I years back when I worked with the other sort of grassroots community organization, we held, um, a parent discussion night at the school on kids and gender and transgender kids. And there was a, I'd have to look it up, see if I could find it. Um, it was like a, I don't, it was like today show or one of the talk shows that did a big piece on transgender children. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wonder about that as sort of a, both as a way to show some support as a committee for trans mm -hmm. kids and their families in Hadley, and also to just work on that sort of education piece. That's a great idea. Um, yeah, because we're seeing the backlash right now. I mean, we just, yeah. it was just what, a month or two ago that there was the White House, you know, our local couple were there to represent, you know, to witness the signing of the law that yeah. um mm -hmm. yeah I know what you're talking about. And so now the states are the conservative states are rolling back as much as they can. Yeah. Um, There's always backlash to profit. Yeah. It doesn't mean we should stop. No. But they were there will always be uh, the analogy I love is the brighter the light gets, the darker the shadows are. Uh, mm, isn't that work? Mm -hmm. I, I have to remind myself all the time. Hopefully, if it's two steps forward, it's no more than one step back. Mm -hmm. right. Well, yeah, I think you have to still look at the whole trajectory. There's mm -hmm. usually yeah. progress is a bunch of things. Right. Yes, right. right. Or spiral. Yeah. yeah. But that, you know, that, that 
made me yeah. made me yeah. happy <laughs> to hear that the LGBTQ mm. um, acceptance had just blown away mm -hmm. all other. You know, it was like a wave that mm -hmm. just the tide turned like across the, the globe. I think almost. Yeah. I mean, not yeah. not everywhere, but definitely in in oh, our country. Yeah. yeah. The acceptance um, really grew yeah. and blew away all other models of biases and stuff. Mm -hmm. that, and you mm -hmm. can back mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, we were on still on Pride A, which was okay. the Pride Month. Right, it's and, that's ideas and, and one of the things you, you suggested the Pride movie. Yeah, but that would be great too. It is a wonderful movie. But yeah, if you can find something that's trans themed, that would be terrific. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can try to do some research. Mm -hmm. If anybody else can find something. Yeah, and if anybody's watching this on our YouTube channel and has some ideas, let us know. <laughs> Yes. Mm -hmm. At um, what is it? Uh, CDEI at Hadley. Yeah, we'll be meeting Hadley. again on the third Thursday of mm -hmm. April. We have anything that's going appropriately. If you want to email it to us, our mm -hmm. our committee can be reached at Hadley C D E I all one word all at gmail dot com. There you go. There's, it looks like there's a frontline PBS series oh, on growing up trans. And looks like there's a an HBO film. I'm looking more at documentaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. Than, yeah. Yeah. Rather than yeah. fictionalized movies. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. I, I love that. I think okay. um, I think you can you get a broader Face of ears when it's presented as a documentary instead of a slant or a smell. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. I don't think it might be something that that uh, maybe the I'm thinking of the school, the Hopkins Academy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, 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 they're they're yeah, like collaborating, mm -hmm. and then maybe it could maybe it could be shown you know, in the library or something. Mm -hmm. the school or something. Mm -hmm. Collaborating. Yeah, I have an update about that for open agenda time. Oh, nice. Okay. And I don't know if we ever, we, we had talked about the possibility of having kind of a, a resource um, uh, list mm -hmm. on our webpage. So, like, if we had, you know, if we listed these films uh, and mm -hmm. podcasts and things like that, mm -hmm. that were, um, oh, yeah. again, balanced eye-opening research on things you know, and you can also have you know you could actually have categories you know this is research mm -hmm. this is fiction this is you know, mm -hmm. there's so much now yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah i think when we talked about that a while back uh was it you sarah that said that um how they learns has a, a vast yeah they do yeah, yeah. they have a good website with a lot of research yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And maybe we link to that. Mm -hmm. That's a good mm -hmm. place to start collaborating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we get our web assistant. That promises when she gets back, we will both go and get trained together. Oh, really? Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, great. I want to yes. say team web page. No, committee web page. Yeah. <laughs> great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the last thing we had before open agenda. So. I'm just curious, to, is Northampton still doing the Pride Parade and is that in June? It's usually in May, May, wasn't it? Usually, you can check. And historically, it was something been, that was, yeah, okay. it's been up against Cushman May Day, so which is why I've never been. I wanted to say it was usually like the first Saturday or Sunday yeah, in May. Saturday in May. The first Saturday in May is usually when the Kentucky Derby is, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, <laughs> see, I'm usually up in North Amherst dancing at Cushman and environs, and then we end up at the Harp right. and watch the Derby and have dinner in the oh, same. Oh, okay, so it is that same. But That's Greenfield great. has a Pride Parade in June, and I have gone to that a couple of yeah. times because the local local Morris right. people from different teams have come together and done a very simple 
version of a Northwest processional in the parade, which is a lot of fun. I would hold the sign straight, but not narrow. I think that <laughs> New York City has it actually. I looked it up. Yeah. It looks like it looks like May, but I'm not. It says May sixth, but from eleven to five. Yes. But I don't know. Yeah. It's is that 2023? I would guess probably yeah, May sixth is Christmas. Oh, okay. Probably. Yeah, Northampton. Yeah. Northampton <laughs> North Pride 2023 date announced. Oh no, that's the UK. Northampton, yeah. Massachusetts. Yeah, a lot of. Oh. They'll start advertising coming up. So. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm betting it'll be nice. Somebody's sense. planning. Right okay. Now. And if I look in my emails, I'll have somewhere I have Crispin's email about the June event up in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. so I, can, I can look that up. Right. Okay. This says May 6th, 11 to 5. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Downtown Northampton. Well, let me make sure I'm not seeing because I put Northampton Mass. Yeah. Yeah. No, it says Hotel Northampton. That's sure. Oh, that would be ours. <laughs> that, that certainly looks like ours. Yeah, that's a great guy. It to go. 11 to 5. Yeah. I haven't been in a while, but that seems a conflict. I don't know why it's there. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was so excited to see that the Greenfield one was in June and I could go. Mm hmm. Could we make a banner and walk as a committee? Yeah, that'd be great. Could wear whites and rainbow. And dance with us. Get our <laughs> kids to get our kids to join us. And mm -hmm. yeah, we're gonna get as many supporters as we could show you. You know, Ron DeSantis, how we're indoctrinating our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, stay positive. Sorry. Shine the sorry. light. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Shine the light. <laughs> it's not helpful. That's a mm -hmm. yeah, thing. Love wins. Yeah. Sorry, Nikki. Sorry, <laughs> Pluto. <laughs> What are you Disney characters? Okay. Um, are there other Pride events in Western Mass? Oh, I bet there. Well, these Springfield or Holyoke or I just know that in Greenfield. Yeah, and they're well supported by yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, do, do the schools do any pride specific events at the schools? Do we know? No. Uh, okay. It wasn't a thing at Waldorf when the kid was little. So <laughs> can we just no. get a new contact at uh, yeah. Hopkins? Oh, she's, yeah. she's going to. I'm ready. Yeah. She's okay. waiting for the so that, That's a question to ask. Yeah. Yeah. If they do anything, because I bet they're what do they call it their diversity club or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I bet they would be all fired up to do mm -hmm. something. Mm. Okay. Cool. Any other thoughts? Port Pride. Uh, I guess if we. We narrow that down, then we can get in touch with um, Haley or um, mm -hmm. the, the woman there. Oh, yeah. Haley or Violet here, Violet. or Patrick over at the library. Right. The ones are being in there. Okay. That um, brings us to. Closing reflections. Yeah, oh, I have open a agenda. agenda number six. Well, opening agenda. Yeah, open agenda. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. Open agenda. I have something, but it's something nice brief. Go for it. I, yeah. I, I think I saw that the the Hadley Learns Group is doing that World's Fair again. Do you know more about that, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Not yet, mm -hmm. but that's great to hear. I think I saw that in June 15. I don't know, if, Megan, if you know what that is. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But that's, that's something great. that's important. Yeah, it's I had one for June fifteenth. That, that's what I read on one of those. I'll put a question mark. One of I think it was the the had learned email about the next event and I'll okay. read it and there's a little piece in there. By the way, okay, mm. I've probably just had so much coming at sure me that enough. I haven't retained <laughs> very much of it. And it's probably fine. I should look back. Through. Anyway, that yeah. that I, I know yeah, you've been. I haven't. And but it sounded fun and, yeah. and educational. 
June 15th is a Thursday. It would be the third Thursday of June. And that would be our meeting. Oh, we should meet. And the following Monday is a holiday, Juneteenth. All right. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm getting ahead of ourselves, but that's something else that we will we be wanting to do something. Yes. Yeah. Didn't we do something yeah. with different foods? We did, was that the last year or two mm -hmm. that we did? Uh, Right. We watched a film about. Um, it was high on the hog, which I missed because I was oh, out of town. Yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Well, spring is coming and everything's coming alive. Yeah, yeah it's great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I can update on my just like brief contact with Sarah Jaber. So she's the new school safety and DEI specialist for Hadley Public Schools. Um, new to the district. And um, saying, you know, it's an essential part of the student's education to feel safe, included, and have a sense of belonging. My role is designed to assist in creating and maintaining that. So she emailed uh, the school community. Um, so as part of her work, she'll be sending out surveys to students, faculty, and parents to gain more insight in what we are seeing in this community and then to determine how we can improve. There will be a variety of questions posed on the surveys as a means to get the most well-rounded information possible. This data will help us design new ways to make improvements where we need them. And then stated that Hadley Public Schools is committed to fostering environments where all students experience high levels of learning and safe and supportive environments. And we want all students to experience our vision and values. These values include commitments to excellence, equity, diversity, inclusion, and belonging. So yeah, looking at reviewing data on achievement, discipline, program participation. So it sounds like they were trying to do a, a big survey, sixth through 12th grade in the schools and getting feedback from students and staff. Um, and then that will inform some of their interventions The surveys are confidential. So I reached out to her, introduced myself, um, let her know that we are in existence. Mm -hmm. um, and Pat had responded, you know, I think I emailed the group like, hey, should I reach out to this person? And Pat said, yes, and maybe she could come to one of our meetings. So oh. I posed that as a possibility. Like I was thinking I could go meet with Sarah, but it would be great if all of yeah, us could sure. meet with her. And then um, she can't come to the April meeting, but she said our May meeting could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. And that also might give her just a little bit more time to start digging into some of the work there. Is his last name again? Uh, Jaber, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, J-A-B-E-R. Her first name is Sarah, S-A-R-A. Okay. And her title is? Her title is... Uh, New the school safety and DEI specialist for Hadley Public Schools. Great. Okay. Yeah, so that's exciting. Both that that position has been created and that they filled it. Yeah, yeah. So if I'm looking at this correctly, I want to give her the right date. So the third Thursday in May would be the 18th. Correct. Correct. Okay. I I can email her and invite. Sarah. Ooh. Let's see how you can help. With those mm -hmm. efforts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And yeah. that actually figures into what my post-it note, my other post-it note mm -hmm. is um, for future wish list. What are groups in other towns and region doing? I.e., I hear about what Mount Toby Friends is doing every month and the yearly meeting, but and most churches do draw from more than one town. Like I'm on the Mount Toby email list still. Mm -hmm. So I know that they have race and class workshops mm -hmm. going on all the time and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I remember from early in the committee when you had the six oh, questions yeah. that we yeah. posed to various. Yeah, yeah. wasn't it the Wesley Church? Uh, yeah, some of those were churches. Some DEI stuff, yeah. yeah. And then of course the Senior Center. Yeah, the yeah. Senior Center had a wonderful of the like right fragility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And and in fact the senior center one was not just racial diversity, it was about economic and all kinds of yeah. diversity too. Um 
but we haven't really gone anywhere beyond with that. Like, could we network between? Mm -hmm. Could we check in with them again? Like, especially like the churches and stuff where, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not part of this, so I have no idea, you know, was that something that was happening when we asked those questions, but it's not anymore? Has mm -hmm. it picked up? Are they, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, would our committee be a, an appropriate group to get back in touch with any of those and say, hey, do we want to network between, you know, if two churches are doing or the church and Hadley Learns are doing something, you know, I don't know. I just, I just don't know what's out there to be connected to each other yeah. <laughs> if they would want it. Right. You know, or, there's a mosque. There's a mosque. Yeah. Right. Right. And are there people in Hadley that belong to faith communities whose buildings mm -hmm. happen to not be in Hadley? Mm -hmm. So we didn't right. ask them because they didn't have a building in town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We should cast that net a little wider and draw mm -hmm. it in a little more. Mm -hmm. also, yeah. those, your six questions were really, really good. Yeah. Well, and I I think only one answer. So I didn't get answers. Right. They were good questions. I can share with you. Oh, yeah, I'd love to hear them. So, but I, and I think that what I got from about Wesley is I got that on the website. Yeah. Um, but yeah, early on, yeah, that was yeah, that was so a good. Yeah. I mean, there's yeah things going on, but I didn't get answers from my emails. I found mm -hmm. what we had going on with it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the thoughts that came up with you sharing about what Sarah was doing. Um, it's interesting. Speaking of community, uh, well, our daughter, who's now almost twenty-five. Uh, she went to the common school in Amherst, and we felt no connection to Hadley, mm -hmm. nor did anyone try. Mm -hmm. Then she went to Hopkins Academy, seventh grade through twelve. Then, then there was the the, the community, but it still didn't have the wider community. So my mm -hmm. question is, why they're talking about the community? That survey doesn't mention residents. Mm -hmm. People who live here, not just parents of students, not just faculty, right? And and that it, I I I it was and the reason why I mentioned this is that our experience at the common school was so community, yeah, so mm -hmm. bringing people in and mm -hmm. and connecting and let's have committees and lots of events at the school where mm -hmm. people were and it was such a culture shock. Mm -hmm. that, and and I, I mean, Hadley's a great town. It's just, there was not, it was more like, you need to fit into our community. Mm -hmm. That was the feeling. Not share your, mm -hmm. it, it it had that and, and mm -hmm. insecurity or, yeah, now this is being recorded, so I don't want to get my daughter into <laughs> she did. She was. She was on the when the first diversity, equity, inclusion mm -hmm. club started. She mm -hmm. that. But now, having many years out of the school, she has a lot to say mm -hmm. about that experience. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, all that to say, if you know, what I, one of the things I might say to Sarah or to introduce is, you know, there's. I, I would love to have more contact with young people. Mm -hmm. I. I don't. I'm not even asked. There's no invitation. There's. Mm -hmm. It's not like events are. I mean, you could look up and see them at a basketball game. Is. Right. But when we, when, when our daughter was there, there was a certain kind of, I guess I'm repeating myself, inclusion, but it was you come and join us. Mm -hmm. It wasn't share your, what you want to contribute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, was, it was just such a culture shock. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder if that's, there's still elements of that. Mm -hmm. But I would want to know, how come I can't give my opinion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's a school employee, of like course. hired to sort of focus oh, okay. on the school community. Yeah, it would be a big, would be a big project to try to serve everybody <laughs> in this town. But yeah. I hear it's you, right? And whether whether there are ways for us as a committee to get more input from from mm -hmm. community members or to try to right because it's a huge thing in communities. Yeah. It's like. People don't know how to give input or who to give input to or just, issues of access or, con or, or connection. Just meet people. Like right. let's get a diverse group of people in and just 
share food. This is like yeah, maybe the, the mm-hmm. that world mm-hmm. there. Yeah, you know, and just yeah, get you know. It, I mean, it, it's great to talk about how much we like diversity. And then I say to myself, do I have any friends in Hadley who are? I <laughs> here they are. I mean, I really don't. I I have my I go to work in Hadley, and all my employees live in a different town. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and so any case, yep. Just some thoughts. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. I was, um, I looked at my phone to look at my contacts, see if I could find, I have known, I know of one, and I think I know of a second contact at the uh, Western Mass Mosque if they Mm -hmm. wanted to do any outreach. not to be the wet blanket, but these were things that we had brought up in the past, and mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. on our wish list right. and things that we don't want to do. And uh, when it came to get reacquainted, I want to speak for everyone, but there was a, I think there was a broad sense of just have the bandwidth yeah. for this. And so um, those of us that are here, uh, including Pat and and Wayne um, decided, all right, we're, we'd love to do this, but if so, we're all going to burn out. So right. we're going to just, right. we're going to just take one bite of the apple. Yeah. We're, we're right. going we're to pare down our aspirations mm-hmm. or our, our, yeah. our expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean we can. Can't make yeah. our wish lists, mm-hmm. yeah. and if mm-hmm. somebody breaks loose and wants to do something, there's there's that as a resource. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. I want to do this. We even had an idea early on that leads back into what I was talking about of of us doing a survey, of mm-hmm. the, a, a mm-hmm. town survey, and yeah, we, we saw that that was monstrous. Yeah, yeah. really a big project. Like, you know, yeah. the the like, who would do this? Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I get that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I yeah. just left off my opinion. That's mm-hmm. all. Yeah, I like totally. surveys. Absolutely. I do surveys. I just want to be, you know, I, I, I just feel, you know, as a chair, I feel an obligation to just remind us mm-hmm. because. Mm-hmm. One of my good friends loves to laugh at me when I explain the story that I, when we went to look at reappointing, getting reappointed, that I had decided I just I love it. It's you know my heart's there, but I just don't have time. I don't have the bandwidth, and so that was how I went into my call with Pat, and how I came out of it was as the chair. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I said, yeah. I said, I said, I said, I said, you don't know Pat, and she's the sweetest. Yeah. But somehow it was yep. like it was like the cartoon where you have the rifle and it gets bent right back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like he's like, so how did that turn out for you? Well, not quite how I expected. <laughs> well, a nice way embodying that. You know, yeah. we're we're all supporting you to chair. I mean, yeah, have that role, but this is not like, yeah. Oh, I'm not a real chair. I I tell you, I said, yeah, I'm just a figurehead, and I do the exactly. I do the <laughs> Robert Rule of the Lord, and she mm-hmm. is the engine that drives. She's, mm-hmm. she's amazing. Mm-hmm. So, I'm glad she's and she had, she she's believes in it and has has yeah. the has yeah. the time. To, yeah. yeah, right. You know, aside mm-hmm. from being a grandparent and loving that, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Miss you, Pat. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Pat, appreciation yeah. fan club here. Yeah. 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 Anything else on open agenda? Mm-hmm. I think I had anything. I had no sticky notes. <laughs> I wasn't that, that organized. How did we live before sticky notes? Mm-hmm.
Anything. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes me so long to get to my sticky notes that I have to put tape on the sticky notes because uh, I carry them back and forth yeah. so many times. They, <laughs> they, they, they fall out and, you know. <laughs> All right, so. Glad you didn't let me jump right to closing. Yeah, so that was following open agenda. Hearing no other um, commentary or thoughts, it, the next thing we had was closing reflection. Again, my mm -hmm. maybe it's kumbaya, but I just thought and yeah. it would be nice if we kind of start off with something and end with something. You know, I mm -hmm. I often um, in the office and every week I there's mm -hmm. one colleague that I, you know, because you hear people zooming that they're, that, you know, you hear their half because they have headphones mm -hmm. or earphones yeah. or something. And um, there's one guy that has, must have some, must be a diverse group or maybe it's upper faculty, I don't know what, but they all do a, a formal check-in mm -hmm. for like, you know, that sounds like 30 to 60 seconds per person. You know, and I see, oh, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just, I'm like, uh, mine don't usually have that kind of time, or mm -hmm. uh, I'm usually lower down in the weeds and we're just trying to get things done. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but, it's but it good, is nice to have that. It's a good thing to sort of step back and say, mm -hmm. why are we in the weeds scrambling along getting yeah. all these things done? Why is that important? And to, yeah. Pour some water and sun on our community instead of just mm -hmm. coming here, work, and then leaving. Yeah. I, I think uh, now some reflections are percolating up. So earlier, Monday night, uh, my sister was in East Hampton, and she's on their what's called Community Relations Committee, which is in the same territory as what we do. And they co-sponsored with some other groups a um, hybrid meeting where the guest speaker was talking about the history of slavery on the Connecticut River Bell mm -hmm. from the perspective of yes there was mm -hmm. but added the piece about how without the slavery all the economic progress in this valley would not have happened mm -hmm. it was an interesting it, you know it, and as as we know, this was common practice. We know now better, but in there, you know, this is this is. Uh, he was explaining how this is how work could get done, and he was explaining how when opportunities to start, let's say, spinning more uh, more wool and making more things and exporting and trading, who is going to milk the cows? Who's going to take care of the children? Who's going to wash the dishes? And that this was it, 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 it was enabling all this commerce that people talk about in this area with pride about the, the mm -hmm. cotton mills and mm -hmm. the and Hadley had I, I think it's some kind of broom making business, mm -hmm. all kinds of mm -hmm. all kinds of things that you know people who know the history of the area, you know, 100, 200, 300 years back speak of his pride and so he's just talking about how this is complicated uh -huh. this, this is complicated and he also talked about the the very real challenge that once slavery is abolished now you've got people who don't have a job and the whole concept that developed where the poor whites are now suspicious of the freed slaves because who's going to get that job? And that still exists today. That thinking still exists today that those people are going to take our jobs. So I, full circle. So that brings me to thinking again about this housing piece, about the piece mm -hmm. about poverty, about lack of, econ of advantages and economic. I just read another article today about someone who, Readily acknowledged, I'm one of those legacy kids who got to Harvard because my dad did. Mm -hmm. I grew up at a 
upper middle class, and I don't know what it's like. And, and in college, I actually did meet some people who were on a scholarship and lower, you know, class issues are a big issue, class. And, and back to the talk I listened to, he was talking about how class is the society was. Every, the highest in this area in like the, the, the uh, middle of the 1700s when this started to really take off, when you start having, you know, commerce and whatnot. He talked about the highest class of all the ministers and every one of them in the area had slaves. Because mm. after all, they got to be out ministering and who's going to do the work? Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, 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 again, if, if you can somehow put your, you put yourself in their shoes, you can, <laughs> it's not right, but yeah, who would be doing the work? <laughs> but it's not right. But anyway, I, I circling back to this piece about affordable housing, I appreciate that we, we're going to keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. We're going to read about the production plan and whatever we hear about, about the um, Econo Lodge piece, I I hope it doesn't interrupt. Yeah, let's keep our point. ears open. And if yeah. anyone yeah. hears anything, please share with them because yeah. town meetings coming up, and I don't know if that's a deadline or not, but mm -hmm. it's, it seems like know. like an opportunity. I would think that that if anyone does initiate some alternative solution, mm -hmm. um, I I would be happy to join in that that effort. I wonder what the valid, the CDC is, is thinking now. I bet they've got some thoughts. So mm -hmm. we might want to reach out and see if we can be okay. supportive. You know, just anyway. Well, I think they have a lot of other options, but I I think that was the best option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm understanding mm -hmm. correctly, Joanne, the, the, the speaker, the, it sounds like maybe a historian. Yes. Was making the point that the economic develop a lot of the economic development in this area was due to the forced labor of enslaved people. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah but he uh -huh. also also letting us know that that wasn't unique to here. Right, Not at all. Course, but that people might have misconceptions about the the history or the development yeah. in the past couple hundred years, and not then identifying that that labor of enslaved people was really a part of that. Yeah. Uh-huh. He he talked a little too about the enslavement of the indigenous people. Mm -hmm. And it's it's just that what mostly he said what mostly happened is is that they they would go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. But then when there was this um uh the slavery is abolished, it, it, he talked about a, a, a migration of sorts mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. because there was no, were no opportunities here, now I'm on my own, and all the poor whites are getting all these jobs. I'm going to need mm -hmm. to leave. Mm -hmm. So there were more. There were more people of color, mm -hmm. more people of African descent. Mm -hmm. so here, and again, here, well, and right. then it went way down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just was an eight, right. Mm -hmm. He was, um, mm -hmm. I think, at Springfield College. He was. A, oh, interesting. Uh, I forget his name, but uh, I was. Yeah, I find this topic interesting. Yes. My my ancestor is Nathaniel Dickinson, who's one of the original settlers in Hadley. Oh wow. And I am convinced that someone in my so many in my lineage must have mm -hmm. had slaves. But this idea only mm -hmm. came to me after reading Martha Miller's book that was mm -hmm. Hadley Learns had her. She's another mm -hmm. historian who knows a ton about the Porter Phelps uh -huh. hunting house his history. And she wrote a book uh -huh. about about the women's role mm -hmm. in all through how women are doing all the work but in there she shows how that then the women would start wanting the slave to do the work right the women of color right mm -hmm. right the women mm -hmm. you know the fascinating book mm -hmm. fascinating mm -hmm. so the whole fact the economics of all this mm -hmm. being a business owner mm -hmm. this really fascinates me mm -hmm. to kind right. of hear the part about economics which yeah. is the whole reason why they brought Slaves here is oh. you do the work. It's economic. Yes, it, it was basically cheating. I mean, I can't yeah. remember the book I I read uh, late last year, but it basically went through the historical facts of the South and the cotton industry, mm -hmm. and then yeah. and then after cotton, the sugar industry, but how these plantation owners. 
the ones that were wise enough to learn to borrow on, you know, and 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 that they could really leverage and get more slaves and more slaves and grow their their plantation. And they made all of this not paying the labor, right? Because they enslaved these Africans. And then when they ran out of, you know, when so something happened, they just moved and went somewhere else. But the other thing it talked about was, which makes you think about reparations, which are just, yeah. in one sense, it's just a farce. I mean, there's no way we could pay a hundredth of a penny of the dollar that we owe families yeah. because it talks about how we denied them the opportunity to accumulate wealth. Mm -hmm. exactly. Whereas, over and over and over. And, 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 and oh, even yes. when they did have an opportunity, when they got too uppity, mm -hmm. they built, when they were successful, they did have a chance, then there would be a revolt and the and the white settlers would just wipe them out, take their land, take their money, yeah. and they had to go to the rest. Yeah, there was no rule of law to protect them. So right. their, whatever wealth they had enjoyed for a half a generation, mm -hmm. Tulsa. Yeah. Tulsa. Yeah. Tulsa. Yeah. Yeah. You never heard of Tulsa right. until two years ago. Yeah. But this was not what I had in mind with the positive. Yeah, well, yeah, no, but it's, not, like, it's, not, it's not. Not. But right. Yeah. Yeah. very positive yeah. to hear the truth. Right. Yes, yeah. and to be in a room where four people yeah. get it. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. this is the the work. There's still work to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the positive thing. Remember, we're, we're shining a light on. Right. 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 <laughs> we're trying to dark portray, it, <laughs> portray an accurate history and yeah. and understand it and learn from it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I would share a positive reflection that uh, uh, I'll try to redact anything because I will get criticized by my daughter because I everything. Well, first, everything I do is wrong. But anyway, um, I'm very proud of her that she's uh, in her gap. You know, she's in her gap year, which. Right. Again, white entitlement because mm -hmm. we've been able to accumulate wealth. Mm -hmm. She yeah. doesn't have to go right to work after school. Um, so she's entitled to do this. And so she, you know, she's since high school had this goal to take a gap year and to uh, through hike the Appalachian Trail. So she mm -hmm. started even before what they call the bubble when most people start, like which mm -hmm. is, um, I believe, early March. And she went late. February to get ahead. So she hit some cold snow and ice up in the Great Smokies. But anyway, she started in Georgia and she's um, gotten through into North Carolina. And right now she's in Tennessee. And within a week, she'll be into Virginia. So, um, but the first month of it, her, her step cousin, her cousin went with her. And um, there was one picture that she 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 posts when she goes into town mm -hmm. to get yeah. resupplied, and she's on the grid and injured yes, again. Yes. <laughs> so she'll post pictures, and there was one that she posted of the uh, of her. I guess he must have her cousin must have taken the picture. She's on the snowy trail, and you know, and all bundled up in layers, and it's all snow and snow on the trees and all that on this ridge and she said white like everyone we see on the trail well he's at mm. you know her cousin's african american so, mm. so oh. he's he's like the only mm. oh you know, right right all oh, right so that's good for i i don't know i mean i'm sure he's not the first mm -hmm. but it's, well, it's good for them for but, breaking right. that you know maybe to, First one to get an early start or something, mm -hmm. or it's just this year. But anyway, I, I thought, mm -hmm. yeah. good to, you know, to yeah. so that the people they're seeing sure. are not all white. You know, mm -hmm. so that I mean, people I'm saying who are seeing them, you mm -hmm. know, right. get more out. You know, let's get more. Let's get some Hispanic or other or Asian or whatever. You know, bye bye. Let's get our people of color out. You know. Mm -hmm. Just one other. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. made me feel proud and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. it's a big challenge. It's a big fight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Good for her. It's 
If nothing else in the closing sharings, then we would uh, reflect on our next meeting is scheduled for April 20th, Thursday, 7 p.m. here. Unless anyone does otherwise. Okay. We'll proceed with that. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, oh, I'm, 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 I'm,